I'm on the track, I'm the same as everybody else out there. Hi, my name's Colin Sells, I race a bit of R400. I live in... At the end of the day, I don't really want to be treated any differently to anybody else. I live here in sunny Liverpool, but my family live in the Isle of Man. They're just as capable as us of doing anything that's within their physical strength range. I want to be able to to ride and, and be appreciated because I've ridden well and not just well as a girl. Well, I've always been into motorbikes. My dad's always been into motorbikes. Um, he's been building bikes since I was born, really. Um, and it's sort of stemmed from there. Me and my brother grew up liking bikes. We got off-road bikes when we were kids. We used to ride around the back garden, around the beautiful fields and stuff. Um, then, when, once I was old enough, got road bike. Uh, that one, that one's quite the only one. Look at the leathers on that. Oh. Very tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're no the word, actually. I did, I did get asked a few times, how oh, did you get into them, but... Spray painted on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known Carolyn for nearly ten years now, it must be. She was completely crazy then, so this is just the next step on from that, you know. <laughs> She could be have her legs broken or something. She's like, oh, I've got a bit of a sore leg, you know. <laughs> she's, uh, she's quite sturdy and resilient. <laughs> because there are so few women doing the racing, people spot you e more easily. There's a lot of men racing and it's hard for, for blokes to get noticed because there's, you know, there's ten a penny. I don't mean that. <laughs> no disrespect, but, you know, that, I think that's the only advantage of being a girl in racing. That see, see the exhaust there. Well, you probably wouldn't know. You don't know anything about bikes, but see that one. That's front that right. Points upwards. That one's pointing down because someone ran me up the backside the lap before. <laughs> 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 if you be careful, I would say that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> 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 well, we're here at Mosey TV. We're at work. I work on Grange Hill and Hollyoaks mainly. I've also worked on Brookside. I'm responsible for the props on the shoot, make sure that they're in the right place at the right time, ensuring the continuity is correct because we shoot the scenes back to front and upside down and everything. So <laughs> it's quite difficult doing my work on motorbike racing and I am required to work weekends sometimes. I also volunteer to do weekends on an overtime basis in order to pay for the racing. So. It can be quite difficult, it's tiring because it, I work in such long days. It's a laugh. She comes in, she tells us about her exploits there, uh, and we just help her out when she falls off. My workmates know I race and most of them think I'm balmy really. Uh, most of them go and watch the football at the weekend, you know, <laughs> not interested in doing things like racing. So yeah, it's, it's quite funny, mostly ribbing. <laughs> This year I've been to the Isle of Man about 12 times, perhaps more. My family's over there and so's my bike. The reason for that is one, I haven't got anywhere to keep a racing motorbike over here or have the facilities to do the work on the bike. Plus, one of the advantages is it's always there and my dad can do development on it when he gets a chance. Well, I've been racing since 1979 continuously. Having either of my children out racing, um, makes me nervous but he seems to have to call them children because Rob's 27 and Carolyn's 29 but even so I understand now how my mother used to feel when I was 25 and I thought she was daft you know. Behind me is the, uh, the landing stage where the ferry comes in from the Isle of Man. Uh, I usually meet up with my, mo my dad, my brother with the van and the gear and from here we'll drive off to, to the circuit. So it does make it a long weekend, it's hard work and it's expensive. It usually costs between 150 and 200 pounds to put the van on the boat. Then you've got all your diesel or petrol costs down to the circuit and then the cost of the racing as well. So, you know, it makes it a long weekend, like I said, but, uh, you know, 
part of the fun, really, isn't it? All the travelling. <laughs> don't actually have much to do with racing, like people at work, uh, you know, friends, things like that. Whereas in, within racing, most people just treat me the same as anyone else, which is the way I like it. Um, I had one incident at Mallory when I had my 400, where I was dicing with a guy on a 748, and I beat him. Went round, as the lads do afterwards, to say, that was really good, I had a good laugh. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not being beaten by a mm. woman, and just stormed off. And it was so funny to see the guy was so miffed with her, you know, it's a, and he actually turned around to her and said, you're pretty quick on that 600. And she looked at him and said, mate, it's not a 600, it's a 400. And it was like, his mate sort of just burst out laughing at him. I mean, at the end of the day, if they can ride as quick as a man, I don't see a problem with it. This year at the TC, um, I was one of two female competitors. I was riding in the, the bigger classes and there was another girl riding uh, 400 um, but otherwise we were the only girls within hundreds of male competitors um, so yes it's very male dominated. I think it's important that I do actually feel and think like a guy when I'm racing because I'm racing against the guys. You did your part of the parade. Yeah, I was, uh, I was with my TT tour of 14 riders. Yeah, that's great. Watch this fast lady uh, rushing around the Isle of Man. Uh, it happened to be you. <laughs> Lapping at 110 miles an hour, was it? I know, it was. Yeah, well, just saying. You're as fast as me. <laughs> if you look at a lot of the male um, races, they're not massive, they're not huge, but you do have to be strong and you do have to be fit and you do have to have stamina, and they're all the things I work on. It's fantastic to see another aspect of racing and to have someone of the opposite sex interested in the, in, in the love of your own sport. Being one of a mi very small minority in the sport, I do gain a lot of media interest, so I can give my sponsors plenty of return. I'm sure they have the ability and intelligence and... Uh, craft to win races if they uh, if they develop the uh, the desire and, and, and the, the focus to uh, ride to the maximum uh, we're here at Cadwell Park uh, racing with the New Era Club last it's going to be the last meeting I'll do with New Era this year got the bags over from the Isle of Man on Thursday night Rob was practicing yesterday managed to crash <laughs> really our relationship in the paddock it's the same as it is and always has been really between me and my older sister so that doesn't change we still see each other the same way and argue the same way you know so yeah the fact that she's racing at the same meeting as me doesn't change it at all so from what i've seen of my sister's riding she's just like very smooth and neat rider she doesn't look like she's trying which seems to help in her favor she's had a bit of a deficit at these new era meetings there's a lot of a lot of quick bikes around and this poor old thing unfortunately is basically standard so she loses a lot down the straights. Got a very good start. Normally you get really boxed in at the first corner but I just managed to get a clear line all the way through. For quite a while her starts weren't that good but now she's got the starts pretty good. got to lap four, unfortunately, <laughs> came down into Mansfield, just gave it a bit too much coming to the apex of the corner. I lost the back and high-sided. Basically, I just put the power down too much. The back end spun free. When it caught, it flipped me over the other side and I, I bounced and rolled a good way. I think actually, before I think about how I am, the first people I think about are my mum and dad. You know, especially my dad because he worries so much. You know, I mean, he loves the fact that we race, but really deep down, I don't think he wants us to do it. You know. She looked a bit shaken, as we all do when you when you've had a good one, like. I mean, sometimes you can just get up and laugh it off, but if it's a, if it's a high side, you're only going to be laughing. You know. 
Yeah. The shock's weird. Because I didn't hurt myself, really. I think it's the most shook up I've felt, actually. It's bizarre seeing sky ground, sky ground when you're bouncing on your knees. <laughs> no, I've never come across that kind of the stigma where people think, oh, God, Gurley's crashed, you know. Never, never on the racetrack. Karen is one of the few women who, who is a racer. Uh, she's a racer on level par with any guy. Now, she races a 400, she's competitive on a 400. Uh, there's not many girls that I would say that about, um, not, not, not being sexist, but I mean, she's just a good racer. She's a good friend of everybody. She can look your eye in the eye and you can, you can talk bikes. This is such a close-knit atmosphere and I've got to know so many people so well this year that they're exactly the same when Rob falls off. But if she, uh, tell her to give a give it up, she'd still probably hurt herself doing normal day-to-day -day things anyway. No point stopping her. <laughs> now she knows how far she can go. It, the only way to find the limit is to get there. Just, just didn't have the power on the bloody straights. And because she's at a power disadvantage to most people in the race, the only way she can do that is by riding really, really hard around the corners. Um, that's when you fall off. So, <laughs> guess what? That's what she did. At exactly the same corner and in exactly the same way as her brother did yesterday in practice. It's my fault because I was only saying last night how damn near impossible that I died of water. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's only damn near impossible, not totally impossible. There are people who say if you're not cashing, you're not trying hard enough. Well, there's some truth in that. Some people cash all the time, like, I don't know. Maybe the slow one is, you know. This year I've been to the Isle of Man about 12 times, perhaps more, usually for racing, sometimes just to go and see my folks. Yeah. They've been going to the TT in the Isle of Man, uh, well, since before I was born, since they got together. Um, they've always loved the place, loved the racing, and uh, I said one day they would move there. I spend a lot of time over here, backwards and forwards, because um, I, obviously I race not far away, and I'm here a lot of weekends and things like that, so I like it over here. It's nice. <laughs> the place is just such a lovely spot. It's quiet, peaceful, very scenic, and... You know, there's a lot of motorbikes around as part of the culture. Derby, uh, where I race in the Isle of Man, is an old airfield. It's not ideal, but it's the only facilities we do have, apart from open road circuits. You've probably seen the culture on the Isle of the motorbikes. When we first came to Libya 20 years ago, nearly every house has a motorbike. And you'll come down to a race meet on this little island with 70,000 population, and there'll be 90 people here racing, all in different classes all day. It's incredible. With Derby Airfield being the only closed circuit in the Isle of Man, uh, up until this year, Clubman used to be able to race open road circuits. Unfortunately, the ACU has changed the legislation and we can't race on open road circuits now until you've got a national licence. So unfortunately, that means there's only one place to race in the Isle of Man for anybody that isn't at national level. It costs just too much to actually go across ferry fees and such like. It's just, without the actual circuit, I don't even have any riders actually coming up through the race space. The circuit we run at the moment runs down the two airfield strips. It's a mile and a half short circuit, uh, marked out by cones and blocks, so it, it is quite difficult to race at first because it's hard to see the apex of the corners because it's marked out with cones. They do endeavour to make sure the cones are in the same place every time, but obviously it is going to vary slightly, so it's hard to get your markers. The right term, uh, VFR 400 NC30, uh, it's been put together by Dave Parkinson, who's um, a, a suspension specialist. Um, other than that, it's basically standard apart from an end can, which is built by my dad, um, Invader Exhaust, and we've taken the alternator and the Jenny and stuff out, but apart from that, it's bog standard. <laughs> I've been out there once before and Catalan went past me and I pushed her for the next corner to get back ahead of her again. It's not nice. Well, I used to think they, uh, they couldn't cope and couldn't do it. 
still a, still, still a TT, still Thunder Barnet. She was brilliant, 112 mile an hour lap. I have no, I have no problems against racing against females. So you sometimes get a bit, you know, it's pushed out if you're dicing with them, you know what I mean? But no, I think it's a good thing really, get, get more out there. I really wouldn't like it if people thought I was only there because I was good. I'd rather be there because I was good. The first race was at um, Anglesey. It was pretty nerve wracking to start off with, obviously, from the first race. And it being in amongst so many people, like getting into the first corner, is a bit, a bit off putting. But once you get into it, you just you get away with it. And it is really physical. You don't, you don't really realise it until you get off the bike and you feel, feel absolutely knackered. I chose um, this bike, it's a Honda 125 RS. Basically, because for 400 it wasn't competitive, you got to spend a lot of money on it to get it up to competitive standard. It takes a lot of maintenance with, with regards to the engine, because um, like every 600 miles you've got to change the piston, and every 1200 miles you've got to change the crank. I work at Dustwood Motors as a motorbike mechanic. I've always had interest in bikes because my dad always had old British bikes, and he used to go on um, rallies every year. But that's where the interest came, just wondering what he was doing. This is one to five. It's like I'm a little community, everybody helps each other, and it's really, really fun in the environment. It doesn't really seem to be anything to do with me being female or anything, they're just all generally really nice to each other, so... I think I'm quite a smooth rider, really. I don't, I don't like the bike getting out of shape too much, and it is actually quite hard to get the bike out of shape on one to five. Yeah. This year, I had two wins at Anglesey. Um, I went out on 250 after my two wins, and I, I fell off and broke both my wrists. So I've been out for, I was out for two months. And then when I came back on 25, I got um, second in the first on the first race back, so they've been my best wins, really. Next year, I'm moving up to Nationals, which I can't wait, because that's where I wanted to go. And I'm lucky enough to get in um, with Team PR Racing, to run Golden Blackie in the Superbike. Although I've got a bad bike myself, I'll be part of a team, so the support will be there. Obviously, hopefully, sponsors will be there as well. It is probably beneficial to them if I'm a girl, and the more publicity you can get and the more sponsors are going to want to come in. My ambition for next year, 2003, is basically to work towards doing the Manx Grand Prix, which is something I've wanted to do since we started coming here in 85. The TT isn't something that I was as familiar with because my dad competed in the Grand Prix. It made that the more special event for me. Probably the most amazing thing that I, I know of over here is at a place called uh, Black Dub near Glen Helen. There was a rider crashed and he went clean over the wall and landed in the River Neb. And the following rider saw it happen, stopped his bike, parked it against the wall, jumped over the wall, and the guy's about six foot four, jumped straight in the river, lifted the other guy out, handed him to the marshals, made sure he was okay, jumped back on his bike and carried on. I used to love it as a kid, it was like one big adventure playground really. To be 12 years old and go and spend two weeks camping, riding around on push bikes or little motorbikes and you know, watching your dad compete on this massive circuit, you know, the, the road racing capital of the world. It was amazing, it was brilliant. It's just pure focus really on on your lines through the corners because it's it's pretty unique the TT course you don't have to just get one corner right you have sequences of bends three four maybe five bends you don't always take the right line for the first corner because you have to take a line for the first corner that will set you up for the next corner and the corner after that and this is where the really really great riders around here score. People like David Jeffries, Joey Dunlop, Ian Locker, because they know absolutely every single inch. Um, in fact, I believe Joey used to practice by driving around in the dark in his car with no headlights on, <laughs> just to remember where he was going. But uh, he was a rare man. It'll be a long time before we see anybody as good as him again. Hello, Mr. Jeffries. He's, you know, pretty damn close. I think the Alamani is more about racing against yourself as opposed to racing against someone else. And it's yourself against the track. And when you get a certain section of corners right, 
the feeling of satisfaction is really, really good. One advantage I do have over some of the smaller guys is my physical size. I can, at the Isle of Man, I can actually muscle the bike about. There's so many sections in the Isle of Man where you're doing corners at 170, 160 miles an hour. And I ride within my limits. Um, I don't take unnecessary risks. I don't ride anywhere near as hard as I do on a short circuit. You know, I go into Redgate Corner at Donington Park on a short circuit, and I'm going in there as fast as I possibly can. I don't ride like that in the Alaman. There's always the I always leave an element, you know, or a bit of a room for error. If something can slide, I can pick it up and maybe run a little bit wide. And you just got to ride like that in the Alaman. The thing with the circuit over there is you give the circuit the respect it deserves. And if if you're in any doubt, you shut off. And if you ride like that, you'll be fine. I started on an absolutely standard 600, did 11 meetings on it before we even changed the gearing, and just rode it. Because you learn how to ride a bike then. If you suddenly jump on the best bike in the world with a trick suspension, you never learn. You sort of never get the feeling of what a bike does. And, you know, you just got to enjoy your racing and stick at it. You know, it, 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 if you've got the natural ability and, uh, you know, you, you want it, you, it'll come. For next year, I have to work on my fitness, uh, cycling and swimming. I'm going to have to do a lot of that, get my stamina up get my fitness up because it is such a long distance and it's very very hard work hauling something around at 130 mile an hour or whatever speed you're doing that's a picture of my first ever meeting in england because i've basically raced over here most of the time if you go out around here and you're, and you're wired up and fired up and, and it's like i've got to win i've got to win you end up ragged and slow if you if you calm down relax and say well, i'm just going to go out enjoy myself do my best the more relaxed you are, the less hard you try, the faster you go, every time. Uh, that's a picture from the endurance race in 2001 at Jerby, two-hour endurance, which I raced with my dad. Uh, we were doing pretty well, but broke down 15 minutes to go. Uh, hopefully there'll be a, a, a photograph of me over Balaf Bridge next year's Manx Grand Prix up there. So, Carolyn, this year's had a lot of people talking to her about the Manx, you know, and say, oh, it's good to see that you're doing it next year, you know, and we'll watch out for you. In fact, it's not that many years ago that, that women weren't actually allowed to ride in, in the Manx Grand Prix, and, and I think it's absolutely right and proper that they are, because what difference it made? You don't have to be, you know, six foot two and, and built like a bull to ride a motorbike. <laughs> Some rubbish at telling. <laughs> It's a brand that's synonymous with speed and style. Design and luxury blended together in a fascinating profile of the legendary Porsche cars. Next. <laughs>